I started off my working life as an engineer, um, but the main reason for wanting to do engineering was because it was something in the family, but also um, I wanted to be a Franciscan, but they didn't accept people when they were young, yeah, as young as I was in those days, and um, although I knew them and that, they, we, so I trained as an engineer. And at that time, there's something they call conscription, which means in England, which means everybody until they were 21 was eligible to put into the army or the navy for or air force for to work two years and to become a thing. It was a hang up from the war, you see. And I didn't want to do that either, you see. So what I did was um, I went to sea. And I think that was one of the best things I, I did because you then see the whole world and realize that, you know, there's many, many different countries and many, many different ways and many places where you can get very interested in. And, um, and I think close up to the whole of my life I've been traveling and seeing places. Uh, From being a, um, a young boy at the church, you see, the, as I said before, the, the church I went to, Archbishop Strong, who was the Archbishop, in, and, and um, there's many stories, and he used to come back every couple of years, you see, and, and we would, he would come and preach at the church. And he was always very keen for people to go to New Guinea. And, uh, and so I was very happy when, after being a novice and then professed, that they descended, decided to send me to New Guinea. So I came out to Australia and went to New Guinea. Um, first of all, we were in um, Port Moresby, and, and that was very good. Um, and then visiting the other um, houses. But right from the start, Brother Jeffrey had picked me to be one of the brothers to come here in the Solomon. So we came over here. In fact, Jeffrey and I were the two that came over and, um, and started here. Um, I think in the back of my head, I always thought that I wanted to be a brother. And that was the important one. But the other side of the head was saying also, oh, I, I think maybe God wants me a priest too. So after working out, maybe these two vocations can stay together easily. Um, and then um, we were very lucky because the bishop at that time was um, a very nice man. And um, he really reached out to the work here in, in Solomon's. But he, he um, said, oh, you're living with all the Solomon Islanders down there at Patson House. So Brother Gerard, every Saturday, will go to Mass at Bishopsdale. And then he'd have a big breakfast and a lunch. So he had some good food, he said, because the food that the brothers had at that time wasn't terribly good. And, um, and I used to have to go on Sunday. And I would have lunch and things there, you see. So we, we sort of grew up like, like that, sort of very much being supported by people. Did I tell you the story about his, John Chisholm's um, <coughs> laundry? The laundry, yes yes, 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 yes. You see, so mm. there was also two sides because he used to get us to do all sorts of jobs for him as well. 
um, including teaching him to drive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then he said that um, we talked about ordination, you see, and he said to me he wanted, he thought sending me was, you say, a different message at the college. I'm not meaning that I was special. I'm not meaning that I was very big brain or anything like that. But it was just saying to the people in the Solomons, this college is as good as the one in Brisbane, the one in Sydney, the one in England. And I think that message is still true today. But I think the message also that he was starting was these Franciscan brothers here are as good as the ones in Italy or the ones in England. <clears throat> and so what he was saying was to the solemn nine <coughs> people, you're not different to anybody else. You have the same gifts, the same talents, you can do the same thing. So nothing is beyond what you can do. And so this was really his way of doing things. And so his ministry was very good. And and I, I think I certainly absorbed that, you see, because the class of students that I studied with, I wasn't the top one. I was just one of the group. And I think that was important, you see. So suppose my name is Dimdimi or High Street. Yeah, that doesn't make you high. But it is who you are, how you work, who you, how you react to people, how you are welcoming. And, um, you know, I think that's probably... Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm. The other thing was... Um, I don't know. I think I used to shock some of the students, you see, because for the first two years of going to Koi, I used to just go in the, um, at lunchtime, then stay that day, sleep, then the other day, when, so I had my classes that I was doing in, in that period. And something for me, I think I was lazy too much here. Yeah? Because the same sheets I put on the bed when I went there were still on there 60, <laughs> six months later. <laughs> I can remember when they were like, hey, you, you must clean it <laughs> out <laughs> So, and I, I know I, I, I made lots of good friends there. Um, I not start going through them because um, too many of them have died and uh, sometimes sad memories are not not good to remember. I mean, they're good to remember, but it's, it's not good to keep thinking when you're doing something like this. But I think the important thing in my time there was that nobody treated me as being special. I was a student. We lived in a dormitory hut. <coughs> I was just one of the people sleeping there. So anything that had to be done, I had to do it too with the rest. We had to go painting the roof of the houses. I had to climb up the house and paint the roof. Yeah. So <coughs> they made no difference. And I think that made me see that, oh, Miss Solomon Island too. Yeah. And um, I think that's, I certainly enjoyed that to see that, you know, we walk together, we live together, we pray together. So we're really children of God together. Mm. I was very lucky also in those early days, we did quite a bit of tra traveling. So with the students going to Malaita in the break time was very exciting too. Um, so after, after two years, I, I had finished the course there, then I was ordained and went to the Protestant house, well, actually it to the cathedral parish. In those days, the cathedral was the head of the parish, 
and we had just one meeting and all saints and um, Lunga and Bishop Steele they all, all met together thing. and we also had to do the pr prison work as well. Um, and so I, I think it, I think I felt it was important and I think everybody seemed to agree with me that there's no difference, you're just as special as everybody else. Yeah? So no matter you white skin, brown skin, black skin, everyone equal. Um, and you, you used to get asked to do things too so with people, so you know. So I, I really always felt welcome here. Then also because I was an engineer, you see, then I was sent to over for a while at um, Taranyara. And um, we had a house there, a new chaplain to there, but also used to do work or go on the ships and things. And um, <clears throat> and that's how, how we got to know so many people. And we made lots of friends. I think, you know, <clears throat> and I think you find it here too. You come, you eat with someone, you live with them, but the important thing is you sweat with them. You're doing work together. And that, that's what we did. And, and um, all sorts of strange things like <clears throat> no Moses, Moses Razak? You heard of him? No? He used to, um, his family, still, he's died, died now, but he's from Fiji, his family live in Sinhaniara. But he was <coughs> a taro for a while, and then was in the, uh, another island next to it. And we used to go there, but we used to do work together there for, for um, him, sort of helping him with his, <coughs> his chapel there. And he got ordained eventually, too. Um, yeah. So I, I think what, 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 we, what we started off to do, certainly Gerard and I, when we first came here, we said that we weren't going to be anything different to the other people. Same food, nothing special. Same rooms, nothing special. So everything was the same. And I think, I think even with the, the prison and the hospitals, you just got accepted like that. Um, and I think that's important. And I think it's important the other way, if you're going to <coughs> Australia or to England, that there's no difference. You're exactly the same. Maybe language is a little bit different. Maybe you have more skills, because I think uh, some of them have more practical skills than most, most other people. <laughs> the things they can do. Um, the, th the other thing was, of course, that um, at, at Koi, I always thought it was very hard because we were, the teachers were more strict with my essays than, than they were with some of the songs. <laughs> Especially if I spelled something wrong. Um, but the, the good thing was because we all also have to discuss things together and I think that's a good way of studying when you're sharing information. Um, the other thing that they made me do what was um, you had to learn some little bit of Southern Island language, you see. So I think I started learning Sikayana and also a little bit of Lao. So the two of them together. So I, I'm not very good at it, but I still remember. And strange enough now, if I get a, you know, I get a fright in Australia, and, and you, sometimes people swear, something like that, it's usually, <laughs> 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 so I always speak something of Solomon, you see. 
it's like your expression work. So in a way, I think I've got a lot of Solomon Island inside, which comes out from time to time. I'm not very good at remembering and thinking things, so if anybody wants to ask anything. No, no. I also had a dance when we danced with the <laughs> <laughs> for um, the festival for thing. Dancing, yeah. <laughs> so which, which dances do you know? Oh, the, most of mine were from uh, Isabel. Yeah. Oh, you, and the, you and the Isabel brothers could get together and practice some dancing here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, have to think of you. Yes, the. Uh, I, I, I think really if, if you think. If you say, what do you really think happened to you when you went to college? I was think I was trained very well. I got to know some very good friends who I still remember. And the experience was full acceptance. And, and what, I, what, I was, what I mean by that is, I was there, but they didn't see it make any difference. Suppose I did something wrong, or whatever else in me too, yeah. Because <laughs> <coughs> one of the lucky things is, is that um, I'd already met some Solomon Islanders in in England before I came out to see like Michael Davis and brother who had come out to England with brother Jeffrey. So what was the next part of this one? Um, I was thinking maybe to finish something about the challenge for the future, but I'm just, you know, you came to New Zealand in 1983. Yes. <coughs> and uh, I think you've been in the Solomons about 13, 12, 13 years, yes. Solomons a little bit PNG. Yeah. Then you come to New Zealand. Was it very different? Um, yes. I think the biggest difference was when I first arrived. When I arrived in Papua New Guinea, I was met at the airport and welcomed. When I arrived in Solomons, I was met. Airport welcome. When I got to New Zealand, nobody came there. I had to go and find out what's their address, and then how, which bus takes me to the to this place. And I said, then where, which which house is this? And I find the number, and I knock on the door, and the door's open by Bruce Paul. He says, Ah, why are you come here now? <laughs> You're not coming till next week. <laughs> I think too, did you find church life in New Zealand very different? It's a, a little bit different, yes, but mm -hmm. I, again, but this is something maybe, you see, my mother's family were what, what we call primitive Methodists. You know, what, anybody know what that is? They don't have bishops, they don't have... Um, priests, they have people who preach, and um, one of my grandmother's brothers was a, was a preacher. When I was very small, I used to go there. But the school I went to was a Church of England school, <coughs> and um, we used to go to church every week with the school, <coughs> and that was very high church in Anglican, you see. So in a way, I grew up with both parts. At the top of our street, we had the Salvation Army Citadel, so, you know, we saw that as well. So, in a way, I, I could say that I grew up experiencing the broad church. Mm. And, and um, I think by doing that, 
I can't look down on any other church. Mm. I, I think I can see they all, they have something and they're all worshipping God and that I can quite happily share with them. And so when I first went to Korea, by mistake, the, um, because we were this um, Roman Catholic um, me meeting or something that, that the brothers took me to, uh, and they uh, said, oh, are you a priest? I said, yes. And so they made me celebrate with them, <laughs> and they to, even though I was Anglican, you see. And, and, and <coughs> in a way, it's, it's, that was probably my fault, you see. I hadn't thought, <laughs> thought of saying, no, I'm not, I'm not a Roman Catholic. Um, but I, I think I have no problem with the many, diff many different religions. I think we, we are, people are different, and, but we worship God. And how we worship God is something which comes from inside here. Mm. Not just something from a book, but how we feel. Mm. And um, I, I think that's one of the things I, I found here as well in, in Solomon. I mean, my experience in, in, in the churches here and everything is, has been very, very um, always expressive of people who want to know God, want to be known by God, want to live a Christian life. Okay, if people fall down something. Saying, yeah, and there's trouble and things, but, but I think inside there's religion. The, and um, as I say this, right from the beginning of my life, we, we had this box for New Guinea mission in our house, so I knew about ministry in this part of the world from the beginning. And, you know, people from the church I went to went to New Guinea. Because Solomon's was more from New Zealand, you know, different areas. I mean, I, I wonder, how does Warwick feel about? Is it? Do you think that worshiping here is different to worshiping in Pumdera? Different. Yeah. Totally different. <laughs> Here in the worship is more like Australian uh, prayer book, so oh, yeah. it's Australian prayer book. Yeah. But in Solomon it's Melanesian, so that yeah. what what they call it? Uh, Melanesian Melanesian right. Yeah. And what's the other one is? So I came to understand Melanesian right here in Solomon. You were in priest Louis. No. Louis? Yeah. Honey Allah. Oh, Honey Allah. So how long now you stop lo time you become a priest now? How long now you stop lo Solomon then you move to New Zealand or New Guinea? Oh, my goodness. About 10 years here before I went. Election down south, you see, in, in the um, outer island, and I was down. I was one of the electoral committee, you see, going down. Then they nominated me, and I said, "Oh, I don't want to." And um, go go go. <coughs> the bishop who was elected only had one more vote than me, even though I said I didn't want to. So I thought, "Oh, it's good to get away from this." Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that's. I don't know, that, that's not my mission, I think, yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, but where did you make the last profession? Up in Guinea, in Koki. It's in Francis Church? Yes, in yeah. Francis Church, Koki. But we didn't have a bishop, because the bishop was away. So I think I'm one of the few brothers who made his life profession to the Minister General.
Did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> and you couldn't find you couldn't find an old bishop or a there spare was, bishop or no, a, there was no, none in Honiara. And in, the, in, the bishop, in, the bishop in Moresby. Was, in Moresby. Yeah. yeah. The bishop was um, very apologetic, you see, so so he um, gave a paper to Brother David, who was the Minister General, yeah. to allow him to yeah. wait. And we lived in St. Agnes' house for a while, while they were building Basson House. Mm. Then uh, Michael Davis and Kabir came, and they came by ship, because they were bringing all of the things that uh, Jeffrey had organized to be bought, like, you know, um, sheets and, you know, a lot of things that, that were coming up from um, Australia. And, um, and then we gradually the house was built. Mm. Then Brother Gerard came. That was the other next one. Mm. What about question? Yes. This one to know and for the brothers too. Was it true that sisters from UK? Who are those sisters? Was it the second order sisters or first order sisters were? Supposed to come to Pacific, but they couldn't make it because of uh, mosquitoes or whatever. I, I don't think. I mean, your story is half right. The um, <coughs> you see in, in England they have the the the, the, the clays, the poor clays, yeah. Then you have the um, the, um, the the other sisters, yeah. CS, um, sisters of the church, not sisters of the church. What am I talking the about? Community of St. Francis. Francis. And um, <laughs> they, the mother of that group was really quite old. They had a number of deaths. Um, their numbers were a bit low. They were just starting to build up. And um, when Jeffrey asked them, I think they felt that there was too few small group um, and, and that's when this, they asked the sisters of the church and they said yes and sent three sisters out so it was because our, our sisters were I think a number of them were old older ones you see and they were a little bit frightened of coming far away I think myself it was a great mistake because um, No, I shouldn't say that, because when, when we started working together, when we started here, we worked very well together. And in fact, Sister Sister Helen and I used to go up to, to the school together, do various ministries together, you know, and so, and it worked, doing that, you see. But then, of course, the trouble happened is when um, new people coming to join. How many mothers and fathers would be happy to put, let their daughter go and live in a group that lived half of its life with men? You understand? Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't as it, uh, first order sisters. No, oh. no, they belonged to a different group. Uh, but the first order that was the the first idea was the first order sisters come to Solomon's. So I think that was the first. That was idea. the first idea. But, but they, they said they're too we, few. Yeah, but we're not enough. And, but also they were preparing to go to San Francisco, I think. Yes. And they they yeah. found they couldn't they couldn't do both. both of them. Yeah. Yeah. And so and so the sisters so Jeffrey looked around and the sisters of the church, you know, they, they had a big community and so they came invited. And then very soon I think they found that it was hard to have <coughs> one dining room um, and a full community life with um, men and women in the Solomons because they, I think they would think many families would be suspicious of sending their daughter to be with a group that was spending a lot of time with all these men. <coughs> and that's why they divided the house, you know, they put that wall in, in the dining room, because when we first went into the house that wall wasn't there.
But we still always work together because, you know, going out to the college together, going up to um, King George and, you know, hospitals. <coughs> Were you doing a, um, you and Sister Helen together running the youth group at All Saints or something? Yes, we, we did that as well, yeah. 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 Mm. And we had, um, one of the best things we did, you see, at that time, Honiara was a very small, really small place, you see. And everybody who worked, when they finished work, at 12 o'clock, they say, oh, they wanted a cup of coffee or something. So underneath the old church office, we had this great big hall with a, a um, little kitchen on the side, you see. And the sisters and brothers used to take turns to work in there. And you'd make, everyone would come and have a cup of coffee, very cheap, five cents, you see. And then you'd also make some sandwiches. So, so people coming out of the offices and that would come in. And, and, and that was one of the best ways of getting to know people because you, you met just about everybody. That, so that, what was that called? Patterson, Patterson, Patterson Club. Patterson Club. You heard of Patterson Club? Some, some of the old people might talk about they used to go to the Patterson Club. Yeah. You might have to live in Honiara too. Yeah, you know, I think. Yeah, but that—that's what it was. So it was just people coming from work at, at lunchtime and being hungry from the offices and something, and they come in and they pay five cents for a cup of coffee. And then we store you see, and then then after that we we uh, were given a, a um, projector, so we. Just, show movies too. So it, if you remember the old Friary, then the old church store, there was one of the big panels was painted white. And that was where we used to show our photo, uh, cinema. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> but I, I mean, I mean the, the thing that always makes me feel at home here in Solomon is that wherever you went, you were made welcome. In the schools, in the prison, hospital. So, brother, apart from all the ministries in Solomon Islands, which ministries were established by brothers themselves? How many mission places like Continue. Franciscans uh, started off? Not the church, the Franciscans themselves started off. Well, I think we started the, the going through the hospital and going every, taking communion on Friday morning in the hospital. I think we started that one. Um, I don't know if anybody went to the prison before me, but I, I went to the prison. Seafarers. Seafarers, another one, yeah. But very quickly people shared with us, you see. So it, it, was, it would be seen as, um, we are part of the church, you see, so it would be seen as the church going in and so, you know, because, um, But, but most of them, you know, it, it's ju just um, being with people, you see. Most of these mi ministries, there, but they're important. How about Sunday school? Sunday school was always the um, sisters. They, they started the Sunday school. If they wanted us to help, they'd ask us, but, but usually they, they did the Sunday school. Because uh, on a um, Sunday, af Sunday after <coughs> after church service, we used to go up to Lunga, not Lunga, the other side, Tasi, Tas, yeah, but where uh, to some of the um, stations and take service there. <coughs>